Hey, get your finger off the scrubbing bar and move it over to the like button because today's video we're gonna be talking about something that's modular, it's stackable, it's 3D printed, it's open source, it's a community project, it has more buzzwords than you have room for. Imagine a world where you can build any windmill you want and have no design experience whatsoever. Now open your eyes. It's a reality with build a -Vout. If you have a life, meaning you don't watch my channel regularly, VOUT stands for Vertical Axis Wind Turbine. And of all of the windmill configurations, which all make less energy than solar panels, the vertical axis type is my favorite. It's just so pretty. There's always been sort of a problem with them though. They either use way too much plastic, the files don't work, nothing fits together the way that it's supposed to. A lot of them you need to print like 50 different pieces and have a hundred more pieces of like metal and bolts and stuff laying around to even build the dang project. And a ton don't even make any energy or spin a motor or anything, which makes them technically just wind spinners, not even wind turbines. So luckily for you, short attention span having viewer, I have organized this video chronologically by the most interesting thing to the least interesting thing. So first things first, Yes, the files are free and they're on my Thingiverse right now. For those of you who are still here and didn't click off right after I said that, we're going to talk a little bit more about best practices when you're building your own build of out how the design for the build of out came to be, and how, this is the best part, you can design your own build of out pieces. We're going to have motor attachments, we're going to have different lengths and, and angles and all this stuff. You know, you could even build like a, a grain milling attachment, because technically a wind mill is a device that mills grain. So these are all wind turbines, not wind mills, but you could make a wind mill. We'll make a, we'll make a wind mill. I don't care. Let's do it. The build of out uses a standardized mounting system. I, my idea was I wanted parts that could fit together just as easily as Legos so that you could build something any which way you want it, right? And so because of that, the mounting is very easy and it's very easy to design your own. I have detailed schematics posted with parameters and everything that you will need to, to fit the mounting standard that I've created. And I'm hoping that through this, we can invite members of the community to create their own compatible build of out parts. But I am getting a little bit ahead of myself, so let's backtrack a little bit and talk about the best practices when building your own build of out. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna say is that your printer is going to need to be pretty well calibrated to print some of these parts. They're not difficult to print, but you're just gonna need to take some things into consideration. The first thing that comes to mind is that these windmills have really thin blades. They're 1.2 millimeters, and I chose this for a specific reason. And the reason is because I use a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, and I know that everybody else, for the most part, uses a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. But I like print things fast. Most of the things I print are, are usually pretty big too, so I use a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. But the, the good thing about the 1.2 millimeter width is that it's a good strong width that can be done with just two passes with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and just three with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I can't stand when you have a part that's like right on the middle and so your printer is just like beep, 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 like doing all these little tiny features. I can't stand that. So I just wanted to do a nice a nice round number that everybody could agree on. 1.2 millimeters is still pretty thin though, so you're gonna wanna make sure that your bed is heated, maybe uh, tick it up a few more degrees than you normally do. I print mine at 55C. And you're also gonna wanna make sure that your bed adhesion is on point, especially when you're printing the nose cones, because the way that those ones work is, is you print them upside down, and so it prints three nose cones, and they, they start going like up and out, and then they connect. So if they get tall, they're tall and thin. So if your nozzle is like ramming into it, if your bed isn't really leveled quite well, they're probably gonna get knocked off the print bed. As for the layer height, I tried to make sure that none of these parts were very much more than a 45 degree angle. So you should be good, honestly, with anything up to 0 0.3, 0 0.35 millimeter layer height. I also know that some of us enjoy a little bit of a curve more than others. So these parts have different twist angles. It's going to be in the title of the part. It's going to be, it's going to say 10 millimeter, 10 angle degree twist or, so, or something like that. Combining parts with different slopes is not going to be an issue, but you do want to make sure that you take that into account visually because it might look a little bit strange if you have a, a 10 degree twist and then all of a sudden a, a 45 degree twist or something like that. A lot of these parts, despite my best efforts, are also kind of subject to curling. So a little bit of CA glue, a little bit of super glue will do wonders if you've decided that you want to keep your windmill in the configuration that it's in. It makes it look a lot better. It makes everything line up just a little bit more. You don't have to use it. Specifically, I, I didn't want you to have to glue anything, but it does make it look a little bit better. Performance wise, it, it shouldn't make that big of a difference. This project is designed to fit 608 RS skateboard bearings. If you don't know how to find those or how to incorporate those into projects, you know I have videos on that. These skateboard bearings have a eight millimeter inside diameter. So an M8 threaded rod or eight millimeter shaft. I forgot the name of it. Mounting things to a vertical axis like this with bearings is never going to be perfect. So I added a spot for at least one bearing in every single part, just in case it's the only part that you use or the last part that you use, I guess. The more bearings you have, but more specifically, the further apart your two furthest bearings are, is going to make the entire vertical axis wind turbine more stable. I forgot to say something really important while I was recording. I use PLA Plus and PLA Pro 
which is quite a bit stronger than normal PLA, but it's not that much heavier. It's not absolutely required, but it will probably make your life a little bit easier. PLA is really brittle. PLA Plus is not nearly as brittle. I'm not worried that it'll be impossible with normal PLA. It'll be fine, but it's just, it'll probably last a little bit longer and it'll be less subject to warping if you put it outside as well, which I assume you put it outside because <laughs> that was a stupid thing to say. This is an anemometer I printed that was designed by Jostac on Thingiverse. Watching it spin got me started thinking about why it spins. It's because the coefficients of drag from one side of the cup arm mechanism to the other are different, right? The one side is round and, and smooth, and the other side is like a flat wall from the wind's perspective. So I thought maybe if you just take that curvy profile, right, and you just stretch it along the z-axis, it would make a wind turbine. And it turns out that it actually does, and I'm not the first to have this idea. That's literally what the Savonius wind turbine is. I just didn't put it together until I had the idea to do it myself. Watching the two spin side by side made me realize something, and that's that the one that I made should have some sort of cup or swooping thing like the anemometer does, so that it doesn't cause turbulence at the very top and bottom. The second thing is that it'd be nice if it had sort of a twist in it, so that even if the wind wasn't coming from the most efficient angle for starting up, at least one efficient angle was facing into the wind, and so my thought process was that hopefully that would help it start faster. And that's how build of out was designed and born. The more I thought about it, the more I thought it was a really good idea. You can build whatever vertical axis wind turbine you want. You can even combine and compare different parts and colors. You can customize everything. And then other people can do the same thing and they don't have to have any design experience. Since I recently purchased the christophersfactory.com domain, I think that's where I'm going to put a write-up about how to design a part that fits onto the build out standard. Geometrically, the mounts really aren't that complex, so if you're just a CAD novice, don't even worry about it. It's really not hard. As of right now, there are about 15 finished build out pieces that I'm going to be publishing along with this video. These include all different lengths and twists of different angles and, and different heights and stuff like that for you to customize. If you do end up making your own build of out, please, please, please send me a picture. You can DM it to me on at Christopher's Factory on Instagram, or you can email it to me at christophersfactory at gmail.com. Also, even if you're watching this and have no intention whatsoever to make your own build about, please give me suggestions on other pieces you'd like to see. I have some really quirky things in mind. I think there's a lot of fun that we could have with this. I was thinking about what if you had a piece that had three other offshoots that came off of it, each of which also held its own vertical axis wind turbine. I thought that would be kind of funny. I really want to get creative and, and just have a whole network of, of wonky ideas and, and funny pieces, as well as the usefulness of, I've already designed some of the gears, I'm going to be designing motor mounts soon, so that you can actually use these to produce electricity. If you can't tell, I am super duper jazzed about this project. I have a lot of really cool ideas. I'm going to be updating the Thingiverse as well as my website probably a couple times in the next few weeks here. Please send me your suggestions and please send me your build of outs. I, I think this is a really cool idea. I hope you guys think it is as well. I've had a lot of new growth come to my channels recently, so if that is you, I very much appreciate you. I welcome you here, and I'm glad you're here. We're doing some really fun things on this channel, and I have so many more fun things to come. So I hope you're buckled up and excited for that. For the rest of you that have been here with me since the beginning, I love you just as much. Maybe a little bit more. I don't know. I love you all. <laughs> I really, I really love reading your comments. I really love interacting with you and seeing the things that you guys make as well. We'll probably be making a Discord here pretty soon so that I can continue my dream of literally becoming Zach Friedman. And I think that'll be exciting because then we'll have a place for other Christopher's factory workers. That's what I'm going to call everybody, my workers. <laughs> uh, there's probably a better name than that, but I can't think of it right now. But it, it would be great to have a spot for everybody to share their projects and their insight and, and to interact with you guys. I, I don't want to do a Patreon. People have asked me how they can support this channel. I don't want to do a Patreon. I don't really agree with the idea. I don't think there's enough that I can provide. I, I hope you understand where I'm coming from from that. I mean it well. I just don't feel the best about just taking your money and then just saying, okay, here's here's my video early. I don't mind that other people do it, I just don't think it's my thing. Thank you for putting up with this super long video and my over-caffeinated self. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you make your own build of out and send it to me, and I hope you have a wonderful day.